All right, so let's examine what happens when a central bank uh, delivers a monetary injection in an open economy, in an open economy like Canada's open economy. Uh, Canada is a small open economy. They call it a small open economy because we have such a small population, really. We have a big country. We are big at heart, but we have uh, a small population, which means that we don't really have so much of an effect on global prices. Uh, global prices like like interest rates, for example, right? So what part of what we're going to be talking about in the next slide is the fact that there's a world interest rate. All right. And so we don't have a, much of an effect on the world interest rate. And so when we set our interest rates, uh, when foreigners compare our interest rate to the to the world interest rate, ours has to be similar otherwise they will sell their canadian assets they, they will sell their bonds and take the money away and um buy american bonds so anyways all i mean to say is we don't have a lot of effect on the price of borrowing we don't have a lot of effect on the global interest rate the global price of money but you know and uh we also don't have a lot of influence over the the price of of rice either right i mean like if 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 rice suddenly became quite popular in canada and we started eating more and more rice i don't know i i don't think the global price of rice is really going to be affected so much by this increase in demand we are a small open economy but let me focus on the open part for the rest of this video the open part means that we sell products to the world and that we buy products from the world and so when our our exchange rate when our canadian dollar goes down when the exchange rate goes down foreigners will buy more of our goods and canadians will buy more of our goods as well so when the exchange rate goes down we demand more goods and services Aggregate demand curve shifts to the right because of consumption, even investment, but also because of net exports. Exchange rate down shifts the aggregate demand curve to the right as well. All right, so um, so anyways, yeah, so we're an open economy, which means we buy and sell around the world, but we're also an open economy, which means that we can invest. We can take our Canadian dollars, we can change them into American dollars, and we can buy American financial assets, American bonds, American stocks. And we do that. And foreigners do that in our country as well. And this has implications into the economy, which we'll start examining now. As an open economy, we enjoy perfect capital mobility. We are able, and many other countries also are able, to, in, to invest in other countries. So, you know, a lot of Canadians, they invest in the United States stock market. And why not? They might buy United States bonds. Japanese do it. Uh, Europeans do it. Right? This is common practice at an individual level, yes, but also at an institutional level as well. We are an open economy and therefore we are able to invest in other countries. So why would that fact make or create a world interest rate? Why would that mean that Canadian 10-year bonds, because they have about the same risk as American 10-year bonds, right? With the same risk. Why would they have to have the same about interest rate? They would have to have about the same interest rate on that 10 year bond uh, in Canada as it does in America. Because if not, like for example, you know, and a lot of foreigners, they own Canadian bonds. Everyone around the world, they own Canadian bonds, institutions, banks. And, you know, if we were paying 2% and America was paying 2%, but then all of a sudden American um, interest rates went way up and they went to like 5%, let's say, well, all these foreigners would be selling Canadian bonds 
wouldn't they? They'd be selling Canadian bonds and they'd be buying U.S. bonds. What that does is it creates like a world rate because people would, you know, try to take advantage of these opportunities by selling bonds in one country to buy bonds in another country at a higher rate, that means that there is a prevailing world interest rate. And it's due to interest rate parity. Interest rate parity is a theory of interest rate determination whereby the real interest rate on comparable financial assets, comparable in terms of risk, should be the same in all economies with full access to world financial markets. All right, so anyways, so that has a lot of implications that go beyond what happens in a closed economy. Now, I realize you probably forgot already what an injection, a monetary injection might, or how that impacts uh, uh, um, aggregate demand and money demand in a closed economy. So let's review that first because in an open economy we go through those same, same steps but then in an open economy it even has further implications. So first let's do a review on what happens in a closed economy when there's a monetary injection. Well in a closed economy when there's a monetary inject, injection when the Bank of Canada increases the money supply, interest rate falls. So when interest rates fall, that means people are gonna consume and invest more. And we see that there's an increase in the quantity demanded of goods and services. Because people are now demanding more goods and services, they're demanding more money. They need money to pay for that. So that increases the demand for money. And that causes a partial reversal in the interest rate decline and therefore a smaller than otherwise increase in output. So we have to remember in an open economy, we go through the same steps, but there's further implications. So the dotted lines here on the aggregate demand curve, AD2 and MD2, uh, the money demand curve too, those are, that's what would happen in a closed economy. But in an open economy, we can see that there are even greater impacts. So number one, when the Canadian interest rate is below the world interest rate, Canadian assets, all these foreigners are going, well, American 10-year American bond interest rates are paying more, so they start selling Canadian assets in favor of other foreign assets. So that causes the exchange rate to fall. Now these foreigners aren't demanding Canadian dollars to buy, right? So that causes the exchange rate to fall, net exports increase, and the demand for Canadian produced goods and services increase even further. And we go to AD3. So because of that, because we're demanding more and more and more goods, so now there, there is a greater demand for money. And this must continue, you know, due to interest rate parity, right? This has to uh, continue to happen um, until the Canadian interest rate rises to equal the world rate again. Otherwise, people would keep on taking advantage of these opportunities. Selling Canadian assets in favor of foreign assets that are paying a higher interest rate. And that's going to continue to cause the exchange rate to fall, net exports to increase, and the demand for Canadian produced goods and services to increase still further, which causes a further increase in the demand for money and therefore will have a further impact on the Canadian interest rate until it rises to where it equals the world rate. 
Did you know that some countries choose to pin their currency to another currency? Countries can decide to do that. In fact, Hong Kong right now has pinned their currency to the US dollar along with Ecuador. And there's a few other countries that have currencies that are pinned. And most of them choose the US dollar these days. But one of the problems, one of the things that you sacrifice when you pin your currency to another currency is that basically you give up your monetary policy. You give up the right to, you know, print money for the sake of other reasons. If you're going to pin your currency to another country's currency, then all your money supply decisions are all about maintaining that pin. And if that pin breaks, it's because maybe your economy is not doing very well and all of a sudden printing money, you know, uh, as a for for purposes of stimulating the economy because you're in an economic recession or something like that takes priority. So it's just it's impossible for the Bank of Canada to simultaneously choose the size of the money supply and the value of the Canadian dollar. So by choosing to vary the money supply, the Bank of Canada must up allow the exchange rate to vary as well. If I want to change the money supply because I want to stimulate or I want to conduct monetary policy, then I've got to allow the exchange rate to vary as well, to fluctuate. That's what's called a flexible exchange rate. A fixed exchange rate is when you pin it to another currency. And actually Canada at several times has, has uh, pinned their currency, our currency, excuse me, to the US dollar. And so there's a lot of reasons why you might want to do that for stability, especially in countries that trade a lot with one another. So in a small open economy with a flexible exchange rate, a monetary injection by the Bank of Canada causes the dollar to depreciate. This causes an increase in the demand for Canadian produced goods and services that is not realized in a closed economy. In the end, a monetary injection in an open economy shifts the aggregate demand curve farther to the right than it does in a closed economy. Feel free to pause the video for review.